A few weeks back, this happened. Well, old Blue Nose started puking some coolant down here on the ground. And then I look at where you can see that lower radiator hose there blew out. The spring is over here. There's the spring out of that lower radiator hose. Whoopsie. climb underneath the truck and start getting it out using eight millimeter undid both hose clamps that's what the radiator hose is looking like and there's the spring pressure blew it clear out which is kind of crazy honestly but I'm gonna go ahead and get the new one installed alrighty guys so I've got an AC truck and I guess that matters so we've got a gates 21405 and a lot of people say not to reuse your hose clamps i'm using them because they're what i've got i didn't think to order new ones oops a lot of people don't put tap water into their radiator either i've put six gallons in there so far truck takes about eight but i'm gonna go ahead and start it up and at least move it up by my back fence so that I'm not walking all this distance back and forth for those last couple gallons. Let's go ahead, get this old girl fired up. We'll hit the glow plugs. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000. see a bunch of white smoke so hopefully no head gasket or cracks happen because I really am unsure why this thing overheated when other than the hose blowing I'm wondering if maybe it overheated which over pressurized the hose and then it blew I really don't know guys drive up here closer to the fence guys so my true feeling is I should probably throw in a new thermostat just in case but I'm gonna be honest I'm a little bit lazy about that because it's snowy it's icy I really can't do a full-on flush with my garden hose because the hose is frozen up and so I don't want to put myself through tearing off the alternator and the vacuum pump and whatnot to get to that thermostat so this is what we're going to do we're going to throw this thermo cure in there and hopefully clean it out as good as we can and then we'll fill up the rest with water and go for a drive and see what happens so she drank just about seven gallons and that empty bottle of uh, thermal cure rust remover. So hopefully we can get this uh, cooling system cleaned out of the rust and it will put new coolant, fresh water, and it'll be all right. But this guy is going to find itself a home right there in case we need it. stop sign Hopefully 
like I said, it, it didn't freeze or crack or something like that happen. I'm just really unsure why that lower radiator hose decided to uh, blow out like that. Unless she was overheating a little or I, I don't really know. Just about to the point that we blew the radiator hose after leaving the house and uh, going to pick up that trailer a week or so back. So, so far so good guys. holes blew out temperature still ain't too high uh, I'm just fighting to drive I've never really experienced this but the road is so soft underneath the gravel that my tires are literally just sinking in and I'm having to fight it the whole way uh, roads don't get like this over on the west side now I live on the east side of the mountains and uh, it's definitely a different environment guys so we went for a long drive no overheating knock on wood so hopefully we don't need that new thermostat but i'll have it on hand if i need it in the future so the destructions for the thermal cure say to drive the vehicle for three or four hours up to several days depending on how bad the rust is i drove it for about a half an hour i'm going to leave it sitting for about an hour i'm going to go for a drive for a half an hour leave it sitting kind of do that because I don't feel like spending a bunch of money on diesel to drive all over. I don't have anywhere to go right now. I wish I had like a long trip to go pick something up that I found on Facebook Marketplace or something, but I really don't. So we're just kind of going to do a couple heat cycles like that. I let it cool down a bit, started it back up. I'm going to leave it running, let it idle for a good while, and then we'll go for another drive. Took it for a drive, we drained it. We refilled it, took it for a drive again, left it idling for a while. We're rinsing it down, rinsing it out. And we're gonna do this about three or four times. Yep, still a bit of green. That means she needs flush some more. So if you notice, I'm giving her the hose. Thankfully, it warmed up to the mid thirties after I started this project. It's been below freezing for probably a month. It's going to go right back to below freezing tomorrow. But luckily, I chose the only day to do this that I'm able to use my thawed out hose. I keep on starting it, draining it, refilling it, starting it, draining it, refilling it, starting it. And uh, eventually, I won't have no bubbles up here. I'll rinse it a few more times. And one of those times, it's finally going to come out nice and clear. No brown, no green, no traces of cleaner or old antifreeze. I also want to note something, guys. In using a hose that's right there next to freezing, you don't want to be putting it into a hot engine. You're bound to crack something using a freezing cold hose spraying right into a hot engine so i've been letting it cool for at least an hour or so after i drained it and after i take it for a drive i let it cool quite a bit and then i come out and i hose it and i rinse it and i refill it and then i go for another drive so it has not been a quick process like i'm showing you on youtube it has literally been about a five hour day already and i'm just getting to the point that i'm going to fill it with coolant and call this project done we're going to refill it with this durex antifreeze and it comes pre-charged with scas it's a full strength so we're going to use four gallons worth and then top it back off with water. These old IDIs, you want to use an SCA pre-charged antifreeze or you're going to have to get the SCA in a separate bottle and add it to help prevent cavitation. Now for a quick lesson in cavitation. The short version of it is it's air bubbles that get inside your engine block and as you're 
pistons go up and down and the little explosions happen your cylinder walls oscillate a little bit they they expand and retract from those explosions from the compression within the cylinders once you got air build up in the coolant on those walls now you've got that oscillation of the cylinder walls against little air bubbles that eventually eat through the metal and cause holes or cavitation from your cooling jackets into your cylinders yeah you're telling me kind of hard to believe some little itty bitty air bubbles can cause holes right through your metal engine block but that's how it works guys so when you put coolant into an IDI truck you either want to get SCA pre-charged coolant or you want to get the Motocraft SCA additive if you're just going to use normal green coolant we're using four gallons because the coolant system capacity is eight gallons so you put in four and then top it off with water should give you the right ratio just a note I am using a hose which is tap water a lot of people say not to do that they want to do the flush and refill with distilled water well if you're gonna flush it five times with distilled water you're gonna to have to buy about 45 gallons 50 gallons from Safeway or wherever you find your distilled water I didn't feel like doing that I just used the hose and it works out great now when you do refill you could use distilled water and that would only be about four gallons worth of distilled water and four gallons of coolant I don't even do that I just go ahead and use the tap water but if you live somewhere that you get the white buildup under your sinks and stuff the calcium buildup if you've got hard water things like that then I might not I probably would go ahead and get the distilled water I do what I want with my trucks you do what you want with your trucks but I'm just giving you guys that information so you can make your own choice let's go chubby get in the truck good boy YouTube is how I went about changing the lower radiator hose and doing a coolant flush on this old 6.9 IDI diesel truck. Subscribe for future IDI content.
is the channel where some dumbass likes to take on projects, build, fix, create, and encourage you guys to do the same. So get out this week, use your hands, take on a project, and accomplish something in your own life, guys. Until next time, keep building shit.